If you're anything like me, the one thing that does your head in as a parent is the whole, it's not fair, she gets to go to the shops with you, or he got to have new footy boots, or how come she gets that and I don't get that? Let me help you with this. And not just in a way to control their behavior and, and shut them up, but in a way to actually give them a life lesson. There is a difference between equality and equity. So in our home, we call it fairness, not sameness. So my role as a parent is to be fair, but that does not mean I can be the same. In fact, it actually means I, I can't be the same because different people have different needs. So those two lines, fairness, not sameness, and different people have different needs. I'll give you an example. Uh, just only last week, I took my eldest daughter, I took her, I said, hey, Imani, do you wanna jump in the car and come for a ride with me? I've just gotta go down to the supermarket, but I haven't really had a good chat with you lately and spent much time with you, so do you wanna come for a ride with me? When I came back, my other child said, well, how come she got to go? How come I didn't get to go? And I said, different people have different needs. You see, Imani, her love language, the way that she translates love, is quality time. She needs to have time with me by herself so that she has access to the whole of my attention because that's what puts the quality in time for her. Whereas the next child, so the child that had asked me this question, her love language is touch. So I said to her, Baya, it's all about fairness, not sameness. Amani hasn't had quality time with me lately, and that's what she needs. I know you like it, we all like it, but it's not a need. You know what you need? You need me to tickle your back and to massage you more at night and play with your hair. With Amani, I give her a pretty quick tuck in. She doesn't get 10 minutes with me at nighttime, and, and even if I do, I lay there and you know maybe hold her hand and chat. I don't really massage and tickle her, you know why? because different people have different needs. It is my role as your parent to meet all of your needs because that would be fair. So the reason she got new shoes and you didn't is because she needs new shoes, she's grown out of them, you haven't. The reason this child over here got new footy boots is because they just started playing football and that's what they need. And the reason you didn't get new dance shoes at the same time is you already have dance shoes and they still fit you. So here's what I'm gonna say to you as a parent. Do not ever treat your children the same way. You cannot parent them the same way. It, it, it's so unfair because if you're parenting everyone the same way, there are some children whose needs are being met and there are some children whose needs are not being met. And unmet needs actually causes trauma. It causes a child to feel like they're not noticed, that they're not seen. It causes sibling rivalry because they notice what you do for that child and they feel like you don't do anything for them. And you'll go, but I do, I do the same thing for all of you. But you see, the reason this child didn't notice that is because that's not how they translate love. There are five different languages. So if you don't know what your child's love language is, that's another topic for a whole nother day. But make sure you find out because you need to love your child with their love language. And my suggestion is purposely, don't ever buy things where possible, where it's not too inconvenient for you. Don't ever buy them all the same thing at the same time. Don't buy all of them a pair of shoes. Purposely buy one person the shoes this week and leave it two weeks to get the next person a pair of shoes just to allow them to practice those feelings of someone else getting something that I don't have without translating that through a filter of it's not fair. This is how you prepare them for life. Here's what happens when they get older, you know, th there's gonna be a job offer and maybe they can't get the job. Someone does, but they don't. Maybe they're going for a promotion, but so are six other people and they don't get the promotion. And we don't want our children to feel like life isn't fair and that it's kind of like a poor me mentality. So how we help them with that is we give them permission to experience all of these emotions while they're at home, while they are loved, while they are safe, while we still have the ability to influence them so that they become familiar with these emotions because familiarity makes us all feel safe. So if I have learned what it's like to see my sister and my brother get things and I, and, and I felt like I missed out, if I have experienced that a lot throughout my life, 
I will be able to navigate my way through those emotions when I'm older and the boyfriend that I want chooses another girl or someone else gets the job that I worked so hard for that I sat hours doing a resume for or the banks give a loan to someone else for their business idea and I didn't get the loan. So not only are we creating a space to connect with our children while we're raising them, but we're actually laying the foundations for some of the most incredible and important life skills that they will need when they're no longer under our watch. If you haven't enjoyed this, please comment down below. Tell me what was your biggest takeaway. I would love to hear from you on this one.